I was having cramps in my legs. I kept thinking, I kept telling him he needs to stretch more. Uh, excruciating and um, continuous. These, you know, when somebody has some cramping in their leg or some tightness in their calf, you don't think that it's going to be ALS. The most difficult thing was sharing that with my wife. It was the farthest thing from my mind that it would be ALS. And then when he did call me, I just felt like the wind was knocked right out of me. We've all heard about ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. It's a horrific problem. Patients lose their ability to use their muscles, their ability to speak, swallow, move, and breathe. I find it amazing that there's still a lot of people that don't know what ALS is given um, how cruel the disease is. It's a very difficult disease. It typically uh... Uh, ruins people's lives within two to five years. Some of us last a little bit longer. It's a horrible disease. Our state of Michigan has the highest prevalence of ALS of any state in the United States. Why? Partly because we're an industrial state and an agricultural state. So the pollutants that are found in this beautiful river due to pesticides and industrial waste, promote the disease. At the University of Michigan's ALS Center of Excellence, our goal is to have a very broad research program and treatment program where we can understand why Michigan, what causes ALS, and how can we most effectively treat our patients. Look at that. Uh, that's PFAS. Let's get a shot of that real quick. Oh, yeah. Did you see that large collection of foam that just went down our beautiful Huron River? What that is, is when the river goes through the dam upstream, because the river is polluted with industrial pollutants, it forms this foam. Those pollutants then are absorbed into your body and they cause damage. Because we have so many different groups working on this, you know, we have Stephen Goutman with his environmental studies, we have Claudia Figueroa looking at exosomes, we can actually look at the problem from a lot of different angles. Our patients are our biggest research partner, and each patient, when they enter our clinic, uh, donates a tube or two of blood, and with this blood we begin to understand the role of pollutants and also the immune system on ALS. This is very unique to the University of Michigan. We likely have the largest ALS biorepository of uh, any ALS clinic. And this has really allowed us to move our research forward. One of the major things that we're trying to determine here is what are these combinations of genetic risk and environmental exposures? For example, those genes that help you detoxify pesticides. If you don't have genes that function well in detoxifying pesticides, then you may be more susceptible. There tend to be higher amounts of pesticides in people with ALS. So we know there's an immune component to ALS. What we have found in ALS is that there's a certain cell in your immune system known as a natural killer cell. Also known as an NK cell. NK cells can contribute to the progression of disease by making disease accelerate faster. What we're doing here is we're looking and measuring those natural killer cells. We're excited about this work because we've also recently received the patent to take a drug that's already on the market and repurpose it to try 
to treat our patients with ALS. So we think that by using this drug, we can actually reduce NK cell levels in ALS patients and hopefully make sure that the NK cells that are still remaining are much less active and much less dangerous. We have a clinic and there we take care of our ALS patients in what's known as a multidisciplinary fashion. Samples that are collected in the clinic are then brought over here to this laboratory where we can look at genetic markers, genetic changes that alter ALS or changes in the immune system really on the same day to better help us understand ALS. Here is an example of a spinal cord section from a rat model of ALS. And here in the green, you see where we've transplanted the stem cells into the rat's spinal cord. And what happens with these animal models of ALS that receive the stem cells is that they have a longer life expectancy and they also have longer, more normal movement and mobility. And this allowed us then to take these findings, these sentinel findings, allowed us at Michigan Medicine to then do the first two FDA stem cell trials, transplanting stem cells in the spinal cord of our patients with ALS. Um, right now, the way I cope with it is to try to help him the best that I can help him. I would always be there for him and he would do the same thing for me. Clinics like ours have increased the average survival of patients with ALS by at least two years. There are a few places in the world that would be able to really leverage the experience that we have in the clinic and leverage the experience that we have with science. The sheer number of resources here at the University of Michigan has really made this project possible. It just takes more and more research. We all understand that hope with ALS is really connected to research. It's something that is solvable. What causes this disease? Why do we have such a high prevalence in Michigan? And how can we develop the cure? Because someday, I like to put myself out of business.